Mashallah, it's going down. It's the end of that of Shabbat. Man, it's say hi to the Shabbat. You already know that. This is Hiram. It's the guardian on the wall. Man, we here one more game. I love y'all, man. We on some Hebrew shit. You feel me? We on that Zadok. We on that Levite. We acoustic up, man. The track on flow. This is... This is tribal mafia, man. We here, we getting it in, man. We checking it out. We hitting you over the head with the drop. This is a 432, man. So you gotta vibrate up, man. Got no choice. You feel me? Those who have it here, here. We way up in the forest, baby. Yeah, I'm just here checking out that that 432, man. Trying to get to the ether. Y'all here with me? We rolling, man. You know what I'm saying? We know we 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 know we all in, baby. So. Yeah. So yeah, we at the 432, man. You can check out the uh, TDR live schedules, the v the video blogs, the drop artist lounge support drop nation. You know that we got the GoFundMe's, we got everything popping off, man. We got we got the Dragon sponsors, man. That's what I'm talking about. The Dragon sponsors, man. I wanna. We don't take hats off, man. We don't take hats off, man. We don't take hats off. We twist up the locks, man. We twist up the locks, so everybody just twist up a lock for our Dragon sponsors. We got three of them. Unfortunately, I don't know all three, but I know the first one. That's Yosef the Real, man. That's Yosef the Real with the Dragon on the wall. Dragon on the wall sponsor package, man. So I appreciate you. Hawa appreciates you. The whole Shabbat appreciates you, bro. The whole Shabbat, man. Appreciate the work you've been putting in, too. Overtime, OT, baby. Best believe the the recompense, the the uh, the the uh, the, um, the, um, the, um, the get back is best believe is uh, tempo. So you can believe that. Wow, wow. And uh, the other two, man, I appreciate you, man. Hawa appreciates you, and the Sh- Shabbata appreciates you, man. We love you. Thank you. We know what you're doing it for. Hawa know what you're doing it for. It's the purpose. All right. Yeah, we here, man. We vibing up. We tribing up. We already tribe up. Alright, let's take that down a little bit notch, man, because we're about to get serious. But yeah, seven days a week, not just five days a week, man. 24 hours of the day. 24 hours of the day, the bread putting in work. El Hawakwam. King Drop, y'all know him as King Drop. Man, the boy playing the slaps. He hitting you with the responsibilities, the priorities, putting the nation on top. Y'all eat the rub. Let's get into that real, though. Let's get into that real. Let's get into that real. Uh, I was running across this video, man. I just want y'all to check it out. Yeah, I was running across this video. I just want y'all to check it out. This video was called... Let me find it real quick. And we're going to do a little reading on it. This video is called the Hamite versus the Shemite. The, Sh- the Hamitic versus the Shemitic. It's by Aqua subscriber called Wake Up Jacob. She's trying to wake up Jacob, man. Sister's trying to wake up Jacob. Jacob, is you woke? So the Hamitic mind versus the Shemitic mind. It's a lot in detail, but a few is just the idolism, the paganism, the human sacrifice, the sacrifice of your children, the multi, multiple wives, and that's just the name of few, but the topic is your moral soul. A moral soul is the difference when it comes between the Hamite, Hamitic, and the Shemitic a uh, verse, you know what I'm saying, and it's it's always like that. Hamitic um, culture is always like to uh, when it comes to the idolism and the, and the paganism, always to take take uh, deities literal, or take um, um, or take um, everything for literal sense instead of looking into the soul. And being uh, what you call spiritual. So. And then when it also gets into the multiple wives. And 
and just the role of the wife, the role of your wife. The role of your wife is more detailed in the Shemitic. We have our aquas or cons. Our aquas are even priests, are priestly, they're apostles. So I want to twist up a lock because we don't take hats off, you know, as a sign of endearment. We twist up a lock as a sign of endearment. Okay? So I want to twist off a, a lock. I want to twist up a lock for our, our sisters, our aquas, our mothers, our Shekinahs. All right? So top battle. We're going to twist the lock for top, top battle, man, because she's doing beautiful work. Chef Khan. Chef Condi. That's L's wife. She's doing beautiful work. Milwaukee Zone, Miss D, Copper Color, Milwaukee Zone, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin's own Indian Chief style. You understand? Miss D, Copper Color. And y'all don't forget Styles by Nina. Uh, Shakina, been hitting us over the head lately in the ether. Vanessa Perkins, we all know Vanessa Perkins and the work that she's done put forth in the priestly manner. Um, Con Miller. Camilla, Con Miller Stu. And that's just to name a few. That's just to name a few. Uh, Mary Jones. Um, Jackie Anthony. That's just to name a few of the Aquas, the sisters. Uh, have a moral soul. Have a moral soul. Moral so what is it so let the sister hit you over the head this is wake up jacob and it's the difference man it's an interesting video the difference what's the difference is it is it continents is it land mass is it religion is it culture is it heritage you understand is it temples synagogues Churches. What's the difference between a hermetic and a shemetic? Is it hair? Is it phenotype? Is it the way you dress? Clothing? Is it cheekbones? Cranial structure? What's the difference between hermetic and shemetic? Check it out comments from uh, some of these uh, some some of these men out here that uh, I would like to say I mean clearly what I suspect is these are people who are pretending to be our people who are actually uh, they say they're Shemites but uh, they're actually Hamites and some of them are coming out unfortunately some of these camps um, and they are teaching out here still with this uh, Christian Hamitic mindset. Uh, these are these are people that came into our lands. They they were people that some of the that you know believe that they're indigenous and you know these are like the Canaanites. Some of them have been here for a very long time. They also call themselves Moors because what the colonists mm -hmm. did was they took pretty much all the you know people brown people living in the land, both you know Shemites and the Canaanites that were here illegally. Um, for many, you know, thousands of years, um, mm. like our people. But the difference is, obviously, it was our land, and, and they basically were here illegally, here in our Western Hemisphere territory, uh, as they were also in um, our East, our lands in the East. And they, today... Mm. So who could that be? The Canaanites being here, could that be the 30 Greek cities in Judea? The Canaanites being here illegally? Um, some of their uh, descendants are claiming to be our people and saying they're indigenous and uh, yes the unfortunately these are some of the same people that are teaching men that um, as well as women that women can't teach and then we have some unfortunately some of our own brothers that are still teaching with the Hamitic mindset because they were taught their entire lives that they were ham so um, they haven't quite made that Ooh, that's interesting did you understand what she's saying? Some of our Hebrew brothers teaching a Hamitic, 
hermetic way of having a hermetic way of teaching. What is she talking about? All right, hermetic way of teaching. Are you Shem and you still practice idol worship? Are you Shem and you st still practice pagan worship? What about human sacrifices? Do someone sacrifice their life, their soul for you? I mean, did someone sacrifice them, their selves for you? You know what I'm saying? What about multiple wives? Do you have multiple wives? Or do you want multiple wives? Do you sacrifice your children? What is your moral soul? What is the difference between shemetic and hemetic? Transition um, out of Christianity. And yes, they are still operating with that hemetic mindset, unfortunately, as well. But a fair amount of them are not even our people. They're just pretending to be our people and that are hamites, I find. And these are the people that typically write in and... Um, you know, basically tell me, you know, they say things like, where's your husband? And, and uh, you know, what are you doing teaching? And they tend to quote, and I know exactly where they're getting all of this, you know, their rhetoric from. And, and it's typically is coming from, it's coming from the, the New Testament. Um, because you won't find any of this saying a woman can't teach in the original, uh, the original writings of our people known as the original testament they call in the world of Christianity the Old Testament. So I'm going to spend about five minutes uh, covering this topic. And, and for the brothers out here, the, you know, my Shemitic brothers who tune into my channel, uh, welcome. Uh, I, uh, they're still that Hamite slave that is still following the way of Christianity. And these are also the guys that are still running around uh, worshiping Jesus. You know, now, you know, for, for, for so long, you know, many decades, they were worshiping, you know, the white image. And now they're running around with a little picture of, you know, a brown image of their so-called, you know, uh, Jesus, you know, sus man figure. And, and the thing that's so interesting about that is if they were really operating with a Shemitic mindset, see, this is why I, I discuss the difference between a Shemitic mind and a Hamitic mindset is that if they were of our people and, and really op, you know understanding what it is to be a Shemite then they would clearly understand you know being a Hebrew following the way of life our creator gave us they would know that that is in transgression running around with this picture um, of a guy with an afro you know with brown skin and saying hey that's Jesus they would clearly know better because they would understand that you know one of the major you know uh, instructions that our Creator gave us was no images representing anything above in heaven or anything on earth or below. So I don't know what part of that. Again, there's there's a literacy problem going on that these these ignorant you know, uh, men out here really don't understand. So I want to clarify this and spend five minutes on this really quick, and then I'm going to actually, you know, switch gears over to, you know, into the topic that I really want to discuss. Uh, but again, this is for them uh, that, uh, that right, you know, right in with these ridiculous comments, because I would like to really put to rest. I didn't think I really would have to do one of these videos. I, I thought some people were, you know, hopefully growing as more and more people are becoming aware um, and, and coming into the truth. But you, again, you still have a lot of deception, and then you also have our enemies controlling, uh, controlling a lot of our people, and they're using these uh, hermetic camps. You know, the folks pretending to be our people that are not. Uh, they're using them to control our people, and a lot of our sisters out there are still trapped. Uh, so, I, you know, in, in Christianity. So, I, you know, again, to, to really put this whole thing to rest. Uh, let's check out, let's go to the sword. Man. Go to the sword, check out Exodus 21. Exodus 20 and 1. It says, and Hawa spoke all these words, saying, I am Hawa, thy God, your God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto you unto thyself any graven image any graven image any idol carved any graven image shim are you worshiping any graven images do you have a picture of your 
Messiah? Do you have a picture of your 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 God, as you say? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything, anything that is in heaven, any likeness of anything that is in heaven. For though there is no tabernacle like the one in heaven, there is no tabernacle. If there is, that is a duality, a duality. For there is no tabernacle like the one in heaven. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven above. That is in earth beneath or is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. The graven images. For I, Hawa, thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the third, the third, children upon the third and fourth generation, the third and fourth generation that hate me. The third and fourth generation was the children of, of Judah, the children of Jerusalem that was enslaved, the third and fourth generation. Overstand and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. It says that Exodus 20 and 6, 6 verse for man. Right? What you say, right? We know it's nine, right? We know it's nine for us. Six for you, nine for us. Thou shalt not take the name. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The name of Hawa in vain. That's what it's doing. That's what you do when you worship idols and pagans and graven images. You take the name of Hawa in vain. All right. Will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember, remember the Shabbat day and keep it holy. What day is that? That is your sixth day, right? Right? That's your sixth day, your seventh day. What day is that? That's our Saturday, right? To go against these demons. To go against these demonic forces. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day, you know what time it is. All right, so that's the sword, man. So we got to debunk the graven images. How do we do that? Hmm. Look within. All we have to do is look within. All we got to do is look within. That's it. So in order for me to help you before we get into this book that I found, it's called For the Hermetic Versus the Shemetic Mind. All right, let's hit you some four, three, two, little Bay Hoven. Just a little bit. Before we get into this book, the Hermetic verse, the Shemetic mind. Let's check it out. I'll let you know the author later. The institutional forms of man, which vary from time to time, a place to place, and are, as a consequence, unreliable. The institutional forms of man are unreliable. He took the propositions made in a crude division of hypocrites and Strabo that northerners were different from southerners. Northerners were different from southerners and explore further those traits and in it innate natures visible in both okay our innate natures visible in both they're going to compare northerners northerners versus southerners now we're talking about continents okay to do this to do this he had to place the whole 
of the universe in a modern setting, breaking with the familiar biblical and hemetic account of origins without forsaking entirely the uh, tripartite division and abandoning the traditional analysis of poles and uh, republic into monarchy, arist uh, aristocracy, and mixed uh, polity and their private vicious uh, opposites. Bowden proposed a schematic grouping of the world into uh, Scythian, German, African, and Midland, dividing accordingly to the form, okay, and uh, you're going to have to dodge some hijacks in this one, the form of the body and, distinct, and distinguished by color, okay, but we're looking for food, remember. A further division into Mediterranean, Baltic, and Midland uh, retained the uh, tripartite structure and invested it with characteristics distinguishable, distinguishable by senses, voice, eye color, and body form. Thus the blackness of the African, right, what they say the African, so they're still trying to hijack you here, and the whiteness of the Scythian, okay, the Scythian in, in, over in Scotland, okay, um, the old division between man and brute was no longer wholly dependent on ancient classical sources, but more upon the patient forensic analysis of habits of the mind and body and upon the visible effects of reproduction and migration, the effects of reproduction and migrating, and the, uh, the analysis of habits of the mind because we're looking at one thing in comparison and, and that's your moral soul. Okay, so we see in the comparison of who does more of concerns for the flesh than the moral soul, the inward, who lives in the outward versus the inward. So when we talk about hermetic versus shemetic, that's what we're basically talking about, the outward versus the inward. Alright, and then we'll explain further. While introducing geographical and astronomical divisions to his study, okay, Baden still relied heavily upon the slender evidence of Tacitus for the qualities of the Germans and upon imperial, empirical analysis of types of men subject to the influence of an inborn nature, the planets, and blood. These sources made it difficult for him in every instance to square the form of the body with existing forms of governance. The position, the position of the Britons, Irish, Danes, Gotlanders, Upper and Lower Germans, and Scythians was clear enough. They now occupied the, prop the uh, propitious, the propitious epicenter of politics that had once been the preserve of the Greeks and Romans. Okay, so to letting you know that these are the British, the Irish, the Danes, the Gotlanders, the Upper and Lower Germans, the Scythians were something different from the Greeks and the Romans. Okay, but that left the French, the Northern Spanish, some Italians, Swedes, Franks, and Norwegians living in latitudes that did not properly fit the new geographical pattern. Moreover, Bowden hostility toward hostility toward the classical writers served only to embellish the old stories with new traits neglected by the ancients, without providing a content explanation to replace the hum humoral theory of the generation of heat. Okay, so they got to put all these things in their analysis, which they're trying to do. All right, as laid down in the teachings of the Kabbalists, the Kabbalists, the Kabbalah sources. Remember, Kabbalah, Christians will say it's something bad, but Kabbalah means to receive. Kabbalah is done with numbers, okay? Numbers which tell everything, okay? Numbers which don't tell everything, you understand? Because remember, the numbers will get you twisted, okay? Well, it's deeper sources of elements into the human body. Okay? 
as laid down in the teachings of the Kabbalist sources, the peoples of the extremities of the Republican and their laws could now be known by the position they occupied geographically according to three stages in history presided over by Saturn, Jove, and Jupiter. All right, dodge your hijacks. Still, there is some ambivalence, amb ambivalence in Bowden's test of the physical form, of the physical form and origins of the peoples. Much depends on language the uh, situation and character of the region, the reliability of the writer and the degree of, the degree of the mixture that has been taking place since the flood, the deluge, the mixture that was taking place since the flood. And only the Jews can boast of having such an antiquity, not iniquity, antiquity. That's a difference. So what so what relevance does this confused and inconsistent source have to have the uh, have the elusive pre-idea of race? All right, we're, gonna, we're getting into it. As we have seen, Bowden use cos, uh, cosmography rather than divine sources. Okay, cosmography rather than divine sources, biblical stories, classical texts or scholastic maxims for understanding past and present, all right? He used the cosmos, all right? Now, we know about that, right? He emphasized sense impression, touch, taste, sense, smell, and association in attempting to discover a new root to the rules governing human actions. What rules supposed to govern human actions? What is supposed to be a higher divine rule, right? He extended his historical interest beyond, beyond the Greco-Roman, okay, and Hebrew origins to include the Chaldeans, Africans, Germans, and Gauls. His analysis embraced a wide variety of types of men who do not share in the common humanity by political means, but who are what they are by virtue of an in it nature under the influences of stars, of the stars. An in it nature under the influence of the stars, of the cosmos. He was much influenced by the secret texts of the Kabbalists. All these shifts result in the first carefully worked out dramatical division of the mankind based upon the natural divisions driven not by ecclesiastical and political principles and practices, but by influence of geography, climate, and language, the planets, and accompanied by evocation to the mystical qualities of the blood. All right. All right, we're just going to go down a little bit. Uh, let's see. Hot man praised Homer's love for native soil, the Tala Salim, and the sentiments that attach themselves to birthplace, to the soil, to the friends and neighbors and contemporaries, but sometimes tyrants being savagery citizens. The question was whether a good citizen was justified in giving up care and affection for the contrary of the countryman's neglect.
Okay. I was trying to find something. Okay, here we go. Now right, it's just going to describe in a different way. Okay. Ham was finally destroyed by Brutus of the Chosen of Remnants. After pagan sacrifice and prophetic dream, I know we, ch we, we understand what Ham, the uh, cultures of Ham. So yeah, man, we gonna. Get, uh, I, I was looking for something um, in particular, but I can't seem to find it. So we just move on. We will just move on. Hold up, matter of fact, let me pause it. Hold on. Shalawan, man, we just gonna have to go on, continue on because they took some pages out of the book. Right when I threw it up on the bandy cam, I mean the uh, yeah the bandy cam. So, but the point is that against which man can measure the quality of existing men, existing poles and existing constitutions and laws, just as the brain, the citadel of reason, delivers the vital organs of the body messages on behalf of the moral soul. So at the end of the day, it's about the moral soul. So in the Republic, the guardians involuntarily possess of title to rule by virtue of reason alone, engaging in soul craft on behalf of the body politic. All right. So it's all on moral soul, family, tribe. It's on moral soul that makes a difference between a hermetic and a shemetic. All right. So we just want to move on, man. We got this with Washington Secrets jumping off. EMP Commission warns blackout of electricity, food, water to last year or longer. Huge death toll. This was in May 9, 2018. Ponder on that for a second, man. I'm going to find us. Yeah, EMP, Commission Warns Blackout of Electricity, Food, Water, to last. A blackout of electricity, food, and water. Nah, this ain't gonna work. Yeah. So what are they talking about? They're talking about a huge death toll. This sounds like famine, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound like famine? A blackout? Man, that looks like a tornado. Let's see what it says. In this May 21st, 1956 file total. So this is in 1956. The stem of a hydrogen bomb. A hydrogen bomb. The first such nuclear device drop from a U.S. aircraft moves upwardly through a heavenly cloud and comes through the top of the cloud. After the bomb, after the bomb was detonated over Namu Island in the Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands, North Korea, North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Young Ho said his country may conduct a historic hydrogen bomb test 
in the Pacific Ocean. Many experts think North Korea wouldn't do something so risky, but it's hard to rule out given North Korea's steadily expanding nuclear and missile tests. All right, Dodger hijacks. Parts of the United States would be starved of electricity, water, food, internet service, and transportation for a year or longer by the smallest electromagnetic pulse attack on the electric grid. The electric grid. On the electric grid. According to a newly declassified report from the Federal the Federal Commission. The so-called EMP Commission report said that the threat is real, jeopardizes modern, modern civilization. sound like home don't it now that sounds like home breathe on that for a minute all right where you at Shabbatai where you at people where you at my kin people my kind people all right so what it say the so-called EMP commission report that the threat is real it jeopardizes modern civilization and will set back living conditions to those to those last seen in the 1800s. <laughs> and as a result of the chaos, millions would likely die. Famine, according to the report titled Assessing the Threat from Electromagnetic Pulse, EMP, Electromagnetic Pulse, from the recently reestablished commission to assess the threat to the United States from the electromagnetic pulse attack. A long-term outrage owing to EMP could disable most critical supply chains, leaving the U.S. population living in conditions similar to the centuries past. Prior to the advent of electric power, said the July 17, uh, July 2017 report, uh, report provided secrets. The 18, in the 1800s, the U.S. population was less than 60 million. And uh, those people had many skills and assets necessary for survival. Without today's infrastructure, an extended blackout today could result in the death of a large fraction of American people through the effects of a social collapse, disease, and starvation. The national planning and preparation for such events could help mitigate the damage. Few such actions are currently underway or even or even being contemplated. Added the ex executive summary. This is an executive summary. The three reports on the issue have been declassified. The three reports on the issue have been declassified by the Pentagon and seven more are awaiting clearance. The warnings in the report somewhat echo those made a similar condition a decade ago, but this time the feared attacks aren't just from a solar event, but a potential atmospheric nuclear nuclear blast or cyber hit launched by North Korea, China, or Russia. What's more, the report warns that despite President Trump's focus on the issue and demand for action, federal agencies are fighting over the issue and defense department which is factoring in EMP so it's just basically saying man they doing you know they doing uh, a lot a lot of rambling they doing a lot of rambling okay now to talk about some things all right those of you who are not going off the grid who continue to want to stay on the electrical magneto system so you need to know life without electricity okay he said the results would be all right on the grid life without electricity 
for wanting to be chaos. All right, so let's talk about social order. Looting requires dust to dawn curfew. So they're already telling you they're going to give you a dust to dawn curfew. People become refugees as they flee powerless homes. Workforce becomes different, differently employed at savaging, at scavenging for basics, including water, food, and shelter. That's what you'll be scavenging for, water, food, and shelter, and social order. Your communications, no TV, no radio, or phone service, okay? Transportation, gas pumps are inoperable. Failure of signal lights and street lights impedes traffic. Stop traffic after dark. No mass transit metro service. Airlines have stopped. You will not be able to catch a plane. You will not be able to ride the bus. Okay? At every intersection, it'll be chaos. Chaos. Water and food. No running water. Okay? No running water. Will you know how to get water from the springs? Stoves and refrigerators inoperable. People melt snow, boil water, and cook over open fires. Local food supplies exhausted. More, most stores closed due to blackout. So you won't be able to go in any stores and do any shopping. All right. Stoves and refrigerators are inoperable. Do you know how to light a fire? Do you know how to light a fire? People melt snow, boil water. And cook over open fires. That ain't nothing to me. Is that something to you? Because the local food supplies will be exhausted. Most stores closed due to blackouts. Alright. Energy. Oil and natural gas flows stop. So you won't even be able to steal gas or oil from your local we energies or Southern Bell. You won't be able to steal gas or electricity. Okay, death and injury. Oh, let's wait. Let's talk about emergency medical. Hospitals operate in dark. Patients on dialysis and other life support threatened. Medications administered in babies born by a flashlight. That's what's gonna happen. Death and injury, casualties from exposure, carbon dioxide, poisoning, and house fires increase. Okay, President Trump's withdrawal, withdrawal from the bogus Iran nuclear deal and his determination to uh, denuclearize North Korea are all the more important because even a single nuclear weapon possessed by these rogue states would pose a all right, so that's when they get, all get into politics, but we're talking about the threat to North America. All right, so then they're going to get into the politics, but must you understand what must go into action, what must go into play, as we've been saying over and over again from day one. You got to take care of your own, man. You got to take care of your own. All this is help. You will not have any help. But have you had real help? Have you had real help? Alright. So we're going to move on for that. So I hope everybody is tribing up. And I hope everybody is going out to purchase or live on the land, man. So you can exercise your right. So you can exercise your right to the wall. Alright. Tukamesh, man, we've been all in the ether. All in the ether, dropping links on Tukamesh. All right, and the Harrison. So right here is a big monument. Left. All right, it says here, Shani, the Shani warrior, Tukamesh. Okay, who is this Tukamesh? Met with Indiana Territory Governor. Tukamesh met with Indiana Territory Governor William Henry Harrison in August 1810 and July 1811. 
Okay, this is in 1800s. So this is the War of the 1800s. Tukumesh spoke for a growing confederacy of American Indians led by his brother. Tukumesh spoke for a growing confederacy of American Indians led by his brother, the prophet, the prophet Ten Sawata. Ten Skawata, he denounced 1809 treaty at Fort Wayne in which U.S. government continued policy of taking Indian lands by treaties with village chiefs. After he denounced it, he denounced 1809 treaty at Fort Wayne and they still, the U.S. government still continued the policy of taking of taking Indian lands, of taking red lands by treaties with village chiefs. Now they talk about this Tukumesh and this prophet, Waka, Tenskawaka, right? Watawa being the same traces being the same traces okay being the same traces of uh this Tukumesh Algonquin Wakashian okay Tukumesh is Hebrew for resurrection okay we're talking about the Toltecs the Toltecs which name derived from Omex Omex alright we're talking about Huimak, Moshe and Kesakota Yahawashua that's deep ain't it you talking about the wars in the 1800's this is the prophet. This is a prophet. So let's check it out. Tukumesh War. This is the Tukumesh War. This is the wars of the 1800s. Tukumesh War. Or Tukumesh Rebellion was a conflict between the United States and an American Indian. So if this is Moshe, if this is Hawamak and Kesakota, Joshua that gave you the promised land. Joshua that gave you the promised land, the America, the Maruk, the Makar, we'll get into that. The Makar, we'll get into that. The mark, mark just meaning America. The mark, the sign, the promised land, Kalelus, Cibola, dragons. What is we talking about? What are we talking about? The United States versus the American Indian. Confederacy led by the Shawnee, the Shawnee leader Tukamesh. Tukumesh in Indiana Territory. Although the war is, is often considered to have climax with William Harrison, right? Victory at the Battle of Tippecanoe in 1811. Tippecanoe, Dragon Canoe, Dragon Canoe, Tippecanoe. In 1811, Tukumesh War essentially continued into 1812. The War of 1812, this is the 1800 Wars. The wars of the 1800s and is frequently considered a part of that larger struggle. The war lasted for more than two years until the fall of 1813 when Tukumesh as well as, as second in command Roundhead, Roundhead died fighting Harrison Army of Northwest at the Battle of Thames in Upper Canada, Canada in Upper Canada near present-day 
，小刀。This is the this is the struggle for control of the Great Lakes region of North America. All right, so y'all check it out. They're gonna hit you over the head with hijacks. But check this picture out. You see this copper color? You see this copper color warrior dragon canoe? The Battle of Tippy Canoe, Tukamesh. Tukamesh. It's all going to break down. The prophet, Tenswa, Tenskawata. Now they put the hijack, man, listen. You see that's a painting, right? Tenswa Kata, also known as the prophet. The prophet, a member of the Shawnee Nation, was born 1775. Name Lala Wikathea Lala Wathaka, the rattle. His mother abandoned him in 1779. He was abandoned by all accounts. Laka Lala Wathika lacked the physical abilities that his other siblings, including his elder brother Tukamesh, enjoyed. Tukamesh enjoyed. His older siblings refused to train him in hunting and fighting. He was so unskilled with the bow and the arrow that he blinded himself in his right eye with the wayward arrow. As an adult, he became reliant of the kindness of his fellow tribesmen to feed himself and his family. He also turned to alcohol and forget his problems quickly becoming dependent on liquor not having physical abilities to become a warrior. Lala Wethika attempted to learn the ways of his village medicine man. Okay, when the man died in 1804, Lala Wethika quickly proved unable to meet his people's needs. They remembered the drunken Lala Wethika and did not respect his medicinal abilities. He quickly turned back to alcohol and proved himself with souls. In 1805 of April, while lighting his pipe, La Wicca fell into a deep trance. Now check this out. He fell into a deep trance. His family believed that he had died and prepared his body for a funeral. Dodger hijacks. Lala Withika regained consciousness and claimed that the master of life, the master of life, a shiny deity, had visited him. According to Lala Withika, the master of life told him that the Ohio's American Indians must give up all white customs and products. Do you hear me? According to Lala Wethika, the master of life told him that the Ohio American Indians must give up all white customs. All white customs. This was told to him in a dream while he was in a coma. That a shiny deity, him, master of life, who is the master of life? Is he talking about Hawa? Hawa had visited him according to the master of life told him that the Ohio American Indians must give up all white customs and products. All white customs and products. Don't that sound like Daniel? Daniel said, I don't want none of your, none of your delicacies. All white customs and products. The master of life reportedly viewed the American Indians' dependence on guns, iron cookware, glass beads, and alcohol as the worst possible sins. The master of life. The master of life. 
the master of life reportedly viewed the American Indians dependence on guns guns Because you want to blame a death on a gun when it's people that kill people. Guns don't kill people. So guns would be an excuse. An excuse to kill someone. Right? Iron cookware. Iron cookware. Glass beads. And alcohol. And alcohol. What does Solomon say about wine? Alcohol as the worst possible sins. If they rejected these items and returned to traditional ways, the master of life would reward them by driving the white settlers from the American Indian's land. That sound familiar? The master of life Hawa will reward them by driving the white settlers from the American Indian lands. The American Indians must also stop fighting with each other, each other over land and respect their tribal elders. Does that sound familiar? If they follow the master of life message, Hawa, the American Indians, the Amaru Khans will return to a life Filled with happiness. Okay. Lala Wathika also changed his name. To Ten Swa Tata. I mean Ten Swa Wata. Watawa. Means open door. In Shani. If the American Indian. Now you see how they said he's changed his name. But before they said it was his big brother. So him becoming Ten Squawata means open door in Shani. If the American Indians allowed the Master of Life message to be to deliver by Ten Squawata, they would have an open door. Whites called Ten Squawata the prophet. Wow. Many American Indians were at first skeptical of Ten Waskata. Most, but most of the area eventually accepted his message. His following grew throughout 1805. He formed a village for his followers at Greenville in Ohio, in the Amaru Khans. He met with the various tribes living in the state of Ohio and Indiana Territory. Among these groups were the Seneca, the Wyandot, the Wyandot, and the Ottawa. His fame grew even more in 1806 when he predicted, he predicted an eclipse of the sun. Okay, William Harris, when William Henry Harrison, the governor of Indiana Territory, feared, feared the prophet's growing number of followers. He dared the prophet to prove his power by carrying out some miracle. The prophet had his chance with the eclipse. Many solars Many scholars believe that his, that, uh, his brother, Tukamesh, had learned of the eclipse from American scientists who had been coming to Ohio to view it. Tukamesh urged his brother to predict the eclipse. Tukamesh was trying to form a united front of American Indian nations west of the Appalachian Mountains. He believed that if the American Indians worked together, they would be able to stop white encroachment into their western lands. Tukamesh Federation became linked with his brother's religion movement as one position strengthened or weakened, so did one or the other. All right, so y'all can check that out, man. I'll try to drop that link, but if I don't, you know where it's at, live and direct. Ohio History Central Connection. So that's that war 1800s. We're going to go a little bit. Come back a little further. Or earlier. Into the 1700s, right? 
what they call the 1700s, we know is the 1200s, and how they the starting of uh, of their uh, invasions, right? Or they say the starting of their United States. So this is Neolin's vision, the American Revolution. All right, Neolin is a Lenny Lenape. Okay, this is a Delaware. Indian. This is a Maru Khan still in the Americas. He's a Delaware Indian, was a spiritual visionary who urged Native Americans to reject European influences. So as you can see, man, all the way to the Chickamauga, all the way to the Lenny Lenape, Delaware, Texas, Khalifa <coughs> You can see that <coughs> You can see that To the Shawnee tribe You understand We were trying to <coughs> We were trying to get rid of this This white man So called white man From our business we were trying to keep him out of our business. Do you see what he was doing? This is from all the way to Ohio, to Delaware, to Indiana. This is all the Khalifas. It said he urged Native Americans, Nagas, to reject European influence and to revive tribal traditions that had warned in the generation since colonialism. His philosophical movement drew from the native faith as well as Christianity and was primarily concerned with moral, moral, moral improvement. When you hear moral, we're talking about the soul and attaining eternal salvation. Neolin's themes of self-empowerment and native separatism helped shape the ideas behind the Indian uprising of 1763. This is including Pontiac's rebellion. His message resonated with Indian audiences who shared a common sense of loss and desire to return their tribes, to return their tribes to a life free, to a life free of the intrusive British and French okay dodge a hijack we know that Brit means black so this is your foreigners infiltrating as British and French these are foreigners Canaanites infiltrating as British and French as Neolans teachings spread they inspire many Native American tribes to unite against their common their common colonial adversaries By the middle, by the middle of the 18th century, the Lenny Lenape or Delaware Indians had become familiar with the disruptions to the native, to the native life caused by the colonial expansion. In the century and a half since, European contact, the Lenape people had sold or involuntary ceded most of their ancestral lands along the mid-Atlantic seaboard with many relocating to the Ohio River Valley, to the River Valley, to the Valley, the Valley. They saw contagious diseases devastated nearly three quarters of their population and they had entangled themselves in wars driven by ruthless competitive so-called European beaver fur trade but they were really slave traders. The Lenape of the 17th centuries were heavily dependent on European slave trade goods. All right, so, as you can see, man, since, since the invasion, since the invasion, we've been trying to stick to our moral soul 
our moral soul. So what's the difference between a Shemitic and a Hemetic? Kesakota. 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 The Mexican. The Mexican God. The Mexican. The Khan. Hawa. Hawa. Occupation. Sun. Wind. Wisdom. The elements. That energy owns it all. Owns it all. Owns it all. Owns it all. Dodge your hijacks. Owns it all. So when we break the barriers, man, when we break the barriers, we learn a lot of things. We learn a lot of things. When we break the barriers we and we learn our paleo and we get back into that, we learn that some Hebrews, some Greeks, some Canaanites have disguised our ancient languages and, and our um, definitions, you understand, um, have caused diversions on ancient names like Shekinah, you understand, like uh, Sheba. Shekinah just meaning wisdom. Wisdom with represents Solomon. So Tukumesh in Hebrew, Algonquian, Algonquian, Wakashian. Hebrew means resurrection. Tukumesh means resurrection. We talking about the Toltecs, the Olmecs. All right, we talking about Moshe, Huimak, Kesakota, Joshua. All right, so when we get back to the Paleo-Hebrew, we learn Kabbalah means to receive. Shakina, Shakina means breath, breath. That's ha, that's ha, right? That's the ha, the ha, man. This is Paleo, this is Paleo-Hebrew. This is your shit. Shakina meaning love, love, aha, the heart. You know what I'm saying? The heart within the world. Okay, that's the Torah. The heart within the world is the Torah. Shekinah. Shekinah, the framer. Meaning the heart within the world. Meaning the heart, the Torah, the heart within the law. The light within. Oh, man, this is deep. Dragons on the wall. And when you combine them together, it's the promised land. It's the Maru, the Mark, the Makar, the Kesakota, the Kalu, the Lelus, Hawashua, the Amawu Khan, the real author, Scott. Come on, man. We're going to twist the lock for Kesakota. And here we mock Moshe and Joshua. You don't believe me, do you? You don't believe me. We got Khan drop in the building, man. 2018 Khan drop in the building. Rainbow Covenant of Kesakota's return. Nahushtan crosses in America. Nahushtan, what, who is that? That's the Copper Dragon, man. That's the copper dragon. The crosses is the mark. The mark is Makur. The mark is Baru, blessed. So yeah, King, man, hit you over the head. And I'm on, um, he gonna break down his son of Manasseh, man. Because when we talk about the son of Manasseh, we talk about Manasseh is Moses. Which I told you before, the N in Moshe is the nun. The nun is the seed. The seed is the father. The father is Moshe of Yahawashua. Ha. 
how Ashua is the mark. He got us the promised land. You don't believe me? Ask El. El Hawakwam. Ask him. He gonna break it down for you people. Check it out. The name of my kid, the son of Manasseh, meaning, means selling. The name of my kid, the son of Manasseh, means selling, and my kid has been given as the original name of America. You hear that? The name of Machir, the son of Manasseh, that's Eleazar. Machir, Eleazar, Yohanathan, Eleazar. Man, we talking about your priest kings, man. Maru, America, what? Nasa meaning means selling. The name of my kid, the son of Manasseh, means selling, and my kid has been given as the original name of America. Body bag gang. Mm -hmm. So again, you have this Kalelu's records, right? Kalelu's or Promised Land. This is Camelot. This is King Arthur. This is Camelot. Kalelu's. Lancelot, Lancelin, King Arthur, Priest King, Pastor John, Templar up. The Kalelu's record speak of Theodorus, right? And it says his name is Theodore, Theory of Mary, my kid. So it's the same. His name is a Mary, my kid. A Mary, right? My kid. Same thing. My kid, my kid, a Mary. America, we got, you know, this, this land was named after Amerigo Vespucian, come on, man, this is going back to 775, I married my kid, you say, what, what's it say at Michael Rourke, that word, friend, my kid has been given as the original name of America, mm. my kid bang, bang. is America, as it has also of the names Maruk, Mark or a Marigio, Scapy, and the Mercians, Mercians, man. So, Mark or Maruk, Mark, all right, like you got Marcus Baruch Khan, the grandfather of Preston John is Mark, Mark, Mark X marks the spot, Mark, Makir, America, all the same thing. Bang, bang. Man. Wow, wow. And again, this is wow. sparked by this brother right here. How Mark, man, let's fall back. A little taste, man, in this classroom. Let me get it back, let me get it back, man. I've been falling back in it. Now, y'all can go either there or here to check that out. But I just wanted to convey to you that we hitting you over the head with some real shit. It's all connected. It's all connected. Connect gang, gang, gang. Tribal mafia, man. You gotta get in the wave. You gotta get in the ether. You gotta get in the classroom. Seriously, man. Dragon history, the temple of Kesakota. The temple of Kesakota, man. If you was in the ether, you'll get this, man. The temple of Kesakota is a great monument. It's a great monument to the South American dragon. The South American, the Amarukan, the Maruk, the Marukan, Dracon, which can still be visited today. This is today, man. This is today. The temple of the Kesakota, the footnotes. The temple of the Kesakota. The temple of the Kesakota can be found in Teo Tehukan. Teo Tehukan, where it stood from about 150 CE to 
250. If one were to see the temple in its entirety, they would be exactly 365 heads of Kesakota or Teolok, which alternate around the tiers, thus the temple celebrates the Kesakota and the passage of time. Three hundred and sixty-five heads of Kesakota or Teolik on the temple. Look at that Dravidian design. The temple has more than just these heads. However, it also has many designs of serpents. Okay, dracons, copper colored dracons to represent the Kesakota. In addition. These are images of priests. Priests. These are images of priests. Sacrifices. And the call to people for prayer. Okay. These are images of priests. Sacrifices. And to call people to prayer. No doubt the temple was created to honor the dracon. As well to offer sacrifices to him. Despite the fact that he did not require human sacrifices to be made by his name. Despite the fact that he did not require human sacrifices to be made by his name. The temple really is a tribute to all things that flow. Water, time, blood, etc. These things were all valued by the people who worshipped. Kesakota, who represented much of these things to people. Now, Dodger Hijacks, you know, your oppressor always worshiping shit. While the reasoning for having Kesakota's head carved is obviously the reasoning for Teolik's head is not yet fully known. Many believe that it is there to represent the change of dry and wet seasons or other such juxtaposition. There are other connections between the Teolik and Kesakota, but many believe the heads are simply a representation of the change or transitions of time. Before the temple was built and when the temple was completed, there were ritual human sacrifices that took place around the temple. The human bodies were found in fetal positions which believed to be symbolic of the rebirth of Kesakota who was believed to have burned himself and flown up to become Venus. Okay, Dodger Hijacks, talking about a phoenix. Even when Teo Hukan was abandoned, the Aztecs still migrated to the temple to offer their prayers to Kesakota and was considered a renowned pilgrimage. Yeah, y'all check that out. So when it talks about your dragon and your different colors and your rainbow dragons, remember my brother dropped that rainbow of Kesakota. You see these hues of blues and reds. This is your Maya. From your Olmec to your Maya, your Kichi, to your Aztec, to your Inca. This is you. This is you. This is the Hebrew. This is you. This is you. What that say? Hebrew. Your oppressor can't understand you nor your hawa that's what you have to realize he's going to worship you because he doesn't understand he can't tap into the frequency so he's going to leave history notes and ledgers to say that you were worshiping idols to convince the people to worship him But now we know the truth. Now we know the truth.
we know the Kabbalah, the Zohar, all just element books of you. We know that your oppressor demonizes everything you touch. Everything. Everything. More solely, he touched our people. He touches our people into following him. He convinces them. He confuses them. Man, we got Farrah Khan. Farrah Khan. Giving you some food. Because we going to get into, man, all your so-called kings of the nigga kingdom, right? What's going on with them? We got Jay-Z. Running right now from the SEC, he owes 200 million to the SEC. Naga, I think Jay Z got 200 million cash. See, when you play this cash game, this Moneto Juno, when you play this cash game, man, you only end up at the bottom of the pile. The bottom of the pile. So we got Farrakhan, man. Farrakhan. Offering food. You gonna dodge the hijacks though. Cause we know. But check this out. Um, Kanye West, are you familiar with some of the things he said lately? Um, that has for me I found it hurtful, but I would love to hear your translation because you might have a different perspective. But he said that, you know, slavery was a choice, you know, being slave for four hundred thousand years. I don't wanna misquote him, but that was four hundred. 
education comes in arrogance that makes you think you know what you don't know. Because all the education we've received, we have never used it to put our people's feet on a strong economic foundation. foundation. So he's trying to break chains, chains of sex. I'm hoping soon to talk to some of my brothers who have let the pleasure of sex and the pain of black life mm. drive them to an insanity. If Those who have an ear here. If you follow what I'm saying. So he's breaking through those kind of chains. He, he wants to break those chains that bind him to this or that. He wants to be a free thinker. He hasn't gotten there yet, but he made this mis, uh, mis uh, I would call it, misspoke. And my man T.I. and, and uh, Kanye have been at it beautifully, mm -hmm. talking, critiquing. Mm -hmm. Kanye is a beautiful man. I'm, I'm hoping that you didn't get so bent out of shape when you know your brother in the, the psychiatric terms had a breakdown. And if you have a breakdown, you don't come back to where you were instantaneously. It's a process. And in that process, he came on with Charlemagne the God. Then he went on TMZ and he talked about this is a choice. Yeah, choosing drugs over sanity, that's a choice of slavery. Choosing ignorance over wisdom, that's a choice we're making. Mm. So we're chained in another kind of way that now that truth will set you free if you reject that which will set you free you've made a choice to be a slave mm. We're offering it. <laughs> so what does that mean what does that mean the path to priests is talking about huh what does that mean what does that mean khan mean king path to a king Pharaoh means path. What does that mean, what he's saying, though? What are you to denounce? Are you to denounce contracts? Are you to denounce Assyrian kings? Worship? What are you to denounce? Huh? Are you to denounce the commandments? No. No one can do without the commandments. And if you had the commandments then you will understand that you would denounce all of your pressures, options, his delicacies. Tribe up. Con up. Can you stop? That was a word. That was a word. Go ahead. Can I piggyback? Can I for one second and ask you a follow-up question? In the current climate, um, you know, especially with the current administration, we feel like um, the racism has been more outright, so to speak. And there are so I was going back and forth arguing with somebody on Twitter just the other day who feels like right now this current administration has done more for black people than we realize, has done more for black people than the previous administration. And some people would argue that it's better now that the racism is more in our face rather than hidden. Hidden, excuse me. What's your perspective on that? Well. That wasn't the intent of this administration to do a lot of good for us. But the nature of this administration is good for us. Because now, you know, sometimes you think you're where you are not. And so Trump is letting you know where you really stand. And because of Trump's way, he is an anomaly. There's never been no president quite like Mr. Trump. But there's something that he's doing. I'm going to come out in a few weeks and talk about Y'all check it out. He about to tell you, man, just the things that Trump been doing. Not that it's, um, not that he's trying to help all the indigenous Indians in some recompense, but what he's prophesizing, everything is prophesized by the Creator. Everything is ordained by Hawa. 
so your enemies will prophesy Hawaz interpretation. So therefore, even your enemies, even the angels who you consider to be bad, will do good for the Creator. So everything will fall into play what the Creator wants to fall into play. So therefore, Donald Trump, he's fighting all your oppressors. He's fighting the federal government. He's fighting the Department of Justice. He's fighting Congress. Check it out. About it. But Trump is destroying every enemy that was an enemy of our rise. Who's the enemy of our rise? Is it the Department of Justice where we get none? Is it Congress where you make a law that favors us and then you turn around and destroy it? Is it the media that has destroyed every black leader that stood up for us, calling us out of our name? Martin Luther King suffered it, Malcolm suffered it, Dubois suffered it, Marcus Garvey suffered it. So he's attacking the media, calls it fake news. Well, I don't think everything is fake news, but I know, I know very well <laughs> that we have been the victims of some fake news. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Hampton, sorry, and anyone, uh, any Imaru Khan that's died, that's died uh, in the hands of trying to have a moral soul. I'll close that with this. Mr. Trump, you have to be careful because I did say on a sister nation, station that if we voted for Trump, is going to take America to hell on a rocket ship. Yes, sir. And America, he thinks, is gaining by the bullying, by the threats. No, uh, Mr. Trump, America is losing. And if America triggers the Third World War, which the Bible calls Armageddon, the America that we know, we shall never, ever know it again oh. we really need to stop mm. and check man because you're getting the country into deep trouble this is the Chicago Morning Takeover man we're sitting with Minister Farrakhan um, I have a question I was talking to some friends the other day and we, we some comedians we all together had a conversation where do we come in as black men and women I know we say it's systemic and a lot of stuff that we go through is systemic and it's embedded in our culture and roots that we don't know our culture actually almost to an extent. So where do we come in and make change? Where do we, what culpability do we wear as African Americans and how do we, how do we ignite change? Now I know y'all want me to say something about the African American, but watch this fool. Watch this fool. I ain't got to say nothing. Watch this fool. Watch how Hawa delivers food to you. Scripture in the Bible and says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I change their condition and remove and heal the land well god is putting a condition on us brothers yes, yes. we are holding up our own progress we love prayer but with what are we praying for we love uh turning our face to god but what kind of face are we showing god loving him with our lips but in our lives we are rejecting him so if we turn and humble ourselves and pray and seek the face of God, then He answers. And tell you, brother, when God answers and we submit to His will, 
then the power comes into us to change the world. And I just close with this. You know, people marvel at Farrakhan because I'm bold and courageous and speaking truth. Yeah. What is he talking about? He's talking about Deuteronomy 28. He's talking about Deuteronomy 28. Blessings for obedience. Deuteronomy 28, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently, diligently, intelligently, attentively, together, carefully, if you consider unto the voice of Hawa, your God, to observe and to do all, all, to observe and to do all, all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Hawa will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee, to come on thee. All these blessings shall come on thee. Thou shalt hearken to my voice. That's all you got to do. Is hearken to your creator's voice. That's it. And keep the commandments. Bless. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. He's saying, bless you'll be in the city because you're going to know when to leave it. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Your body will be blessed. Because no more blood sacrifices. And the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy, thy flocks and thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy store. Blessed when it cometh and blessed. That when it goeth, blessed shall be the cause. The Lord shall cause thy enemies to rise up against thee to smite him before thy face and shall come out against thee one way flee before the seven ways. All right, that's Deuteronomy 28. For only you I know. For only you I know. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Hawa. Hawa. Jacob, you called by Hawa. And they shall be afraid of you. And they shall be afraid of you. The power. It's not because I'm. So. This money, man. This money. This money. This illusion. Now, because of this illusion and this fight to, to get this illusion, Jay-Z is subpoenaed by the SCC, the SEC. Let's read a little bit. Jay-Z has been subpoenaed by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. The SEC said it was seeking an order directing the rap artist, whose real name is Sean Carter to comply with an investigation related to financial reporting of New York-based iconic brand group. Okay, Jay-Z sold more than 200 million in intangible, intangible assets, meaning shit that don't exist, associated with the Carter's Rockwell apparel brand to the Iconics a decade ago, 10 years ago. After the acquisition, Carter and the Iconics maintained uh, publicly disclosed partnerships related in the Rockaware brand that SEC stated. In March 2016, two years ago, Iconex publicly announced a night 169 million write down of Rockaware. And in March of this year, Iconex announced a further write down of 36 million. So that's 200 million. However, the Rock 
business reportedly generated one billion since the Iconix first purchased its trademarks in 2007. Damn. Jay-Z maintains that he has no role in any financial reporting related to Iconix and his representative has been floating a statement to media sources proclaiming that he is a private citizen who should not be involved in this business matter. So what they're saying is that he thought he convert, he could, uh, it don't matter what they say. You know, I don't want to talk about, um, personal business but the thing is that the SEC that's owned by the Jews the so called synagogue of Satan is coming for your money the money that you vow so dearly they're coming for it now and what it appears to be like they talking about you dodge you've dodged subpoenas this is like your third or second subpoena. Subpoena. And what they basically saying is that, man, they set you up from the jump. They knew that company. We, we knew that company wasn't making no more money. How did, how did we know that on the street? How did the average, the average Jacob, the average Jake on the street knew that that company wasn't making no money because wasn't nobody on the street even buying Rockaway clothing when it sold for over $400 million. So right then, that's why Damon Dash, well, I'm not going to talk about people personal, but Damon Dash said this personally that he told Jay not to take that money, not to take that deal. But somebody told Jay to buy Damon Dash shares and he went and did it and he, and he made the deal and got the money. So now 10 years later, they coming back for the money. And they like, nigga, in the last 10 years, we calculated you made over a billion dollars. So where the money at, Jay? We need that back. We need all that back. Now that's fucked up. Excuse me, grandmama. So that made me want to go into <laughs> actually another link. Do black celebrities go to jail for tax invasion more than whites? Now, we got two similar situations. We got two similar situations. This uh, Nino Brown, played Nino Brown in New Jack City. Uh, what's his name? Wesley Snipes. He owed the IRS 13 million. What was his conclusion? He didn't take a plea, he fought it, he lost. They gave him three years in prison. Now this Nick Nolte, he owed the IRS 14 million. What did he do? He took a plea and only had to sell his Bavarian castle. So he paid a couple million dollars, but he had to just liquidate. He took the plea. Wesley fought it and lost, got three years in prison. But did he get a plea where he just had to liquidate an asset? Did he get that option that he just had to liquidate one asset and he could be scot-free? So let's see what the Urban Daily staff is saying. Do celebrities go to jail for tax invasion more than whites? Let's see. They don't leave no images available. But let's see if they do. Alright. With news still sinking in about Lauren Hill impending three months jail sentence for tax invasion. Oh, y'all didn't know that? Lauren Hill might do it. Or, or even had to do 
three months in jail for tax evasion. The question that everyone starting to ask was, who else been in trouble with the IRS and had to serve time? While that question is on its face was enough to ponder. An even deeper question started to be asked. How many Caucasians celebrated, I mean celebrities, have we heard I'm going to jail for this crime recently? According to the CFO Daily News, the following entertainers or people uh, of note have, have been in some type of trouble with the United States government for tax evasion. Okay, so let's run down the list. Ten people, Martha Stewart, who we know is not indigenous. Wesley Snipes, we know he's indigenous. Nick Cage, oh, not Nick, no, his name was Nick Cage. All right, Mark Anthony, Annie Leibowitz, Daryl Strawberry, he's indigenous. Sophia Loren, Ronald Isley, Tony Braxton, Sinbad, Chuck Berry, Richard Pryor. Okay, and to the list we add Benny Siegel, Ja Rule, and now Lauren Hill had to go to jail. All right. So you got Wesley Snipes, Daryl Strawberry, Sophia Lauren, Ronald Isley, Tony Braxton, Sinbad, Chuck Berry, Richard Pryor, Benny Siegel, and Ja Rule, and Lauren Hill. That's probably 10 right there. But then out of the so called Gentiles or, or, or Caucasians. You got Martha Stewart, Nick Cage, Mark Anthony, Annie Livowitz, Joe the Plumber, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Daschle, Stephen Baldwin, Pamela Anderson, uh, Dog Champion, Chapman, Dwayne Chapman, Willie Nelson, and dude from The Girls Gone Wild, Joe Francis. Okay. Of the celebrities listed, only a few went to jail for those tax-related crimes. Richard Pryor, Richard Hatch, Chuck Berry, Ronald Isley, Benny Siegel, Ja Rule, Wesley Snipes, Sophia Loren, and now Lauren Hill. Okay, so they ain't gonna give me no photos of the nine that went to jail. There seems to be some type of difference between the list though, right? No? Oh, what could it be? Might it be that this list exhibits a bit more color than the others? So yeah, so there's a more colored people or people of color like they saying, which aren't people of color, they're indigenous copper colored people. Alright. I've went to prison over taxes. And see y'all don't understand, see a dummy will sit there and say, Oh yeah, they doing their books wrong. <laughs> yeah, all right. You think they're doing their books wrong, man? Listen, I've uh, been in business for nine years. I've been audited twice, and I don't make a tenth percent of what these people make, what these other melanated people make. It ain't about how much you make. It's about you playing this game, and you're not going to win in the end. That's what it's about. So why do black celebrities go to jail for tax evasion more than whites? Hmm? I don't know, man. That's for you to figure out. Forbes magazine, who can be prosecuted for failure to file a tax return? That's a misdemeanor or filing falsely a felony. The latter is more serious and the penalties are more frightening. Mr. Snipes was tried as a felony and, dis and misdemeanor tax charges, but only was convicted of, of misdemeanors, right? But he did three years in prison for a misdemeanor. So they just go and break down, you know, the effects, but so are so-called African-American celebrities being unfairly targeted, prosecuted, and given stiffer sentences than their white counterparts? Or could the difference be between those who chose to take plea deals versus going to court? Man, I'll let y'all break that down, but I'm pretty sure y'all know the answer. Vibe up, tribe up, con up. For you to matter, con, you are 
Kamaru Khan. Wisdom is what you maintain. We not above the firmament. Y'all make sure y'all get into the ether, man. I'll be seeing my Shabbata real soon. You're always in my heart. You're always in my heart. My Shekinah. My Ha. My Ha. My, my heart within the world. My Torah. My law. My light within. For I need my framer and my shaper. So we're going to breathe fire on this shit because we're going to breathe fire on these oppressors. On those who oppose, we breathe fire on them. So we're going to stay vibrated up. We're going to stay nine above. We're going to stay chasing hounds from the barrier. We're going to stay lit up. We're going to stay surfing. We're going to continue to be the water forever. And ever and ever. Hold yourself up. Hold yourself up. For you are the righteous seed. Oh. <gasps>